Hey there, it's Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe and today I'm here to give you my very big, as usual, book haul where I'm very excited to talk about all of the books that I've got in in the past few months. We've got quite a sack to go through here so let's get right down to the books that I'm hauling on to my shelves. So the very first book I've got here to show you is one that Hannah from Ledet and was unhauling and kindly sent my way and that is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Forsett. This is a fey book that I've seen around a lot about this woman who's going through this world and cataloguing all of the fairies in an encyclopedia. I am not a big fan of fey books, it really has to be a certain type of fey book for me to get behind it. And when Hannah was talking about all the reasons why she didn't like this particular one, it kind of made sense to me that it's the kind of fey book that I would really like, where it's kind of soft and gentle and everybody's nice and it almost feels cosy and pleasant and there's a romance in it, but it's not too high stakes, it's not the daring kind of fairies. They do have fairy-like elements to them, but they're a bit more sweet on the whole and that's the kind of fairy I like like the Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson type of fae so I'm gonna give it a go see what I think and hopefully it'll be one where the hype just matches what I'm looking for in a book. I was also sent a finished copy of Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. Again I did haul this one in proof but I'll just mention it briefly here. I'm happy to have a finished copy. It sounds like a cosy fantasy time and very very sweet. And it's all about like bookshops in a fantasy world. What more could you want? Huge thanks to the publisher for sending me a copy of Out There Screaming which is an anthology of black horror and sci-fi books I would say and sci-fi short stories I would say by Jordan Peele or edited by Jordan Peele, they're selected by Jordan Peele and I've already read some of the short stories in this collection and I'm absolutely loving it. I know a lot of people go in expecting only like black horror but don't expect for it to just be black horror. There are some of these which are clearly sci-fi stories and they're short stories by some of the Afrofuturist greatest. You've got short stories by N.K. Jemisin in here, you've got some by Nnedi Okorafor, Tanariva Du, P. Jelly Clark, Tochi Onyabuchi, just to name a couple, but there's some other authors I'm excited to hear about, like Rebecca Roanhorse's story. It just sounds like a really strong list of authors who have been created and collected into this lovely collection for us to read. So if you didn't know, if you're a big fan of Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshi Kazu Kawaguchi, like me, I just love these short stories. I find them very emotional and just so good at talking about grief because it's set in a little cafe where if you sit in a particular seat you can time travel to the past or to the future and whatever you do there doesn't have any mark on the present day so people are often coming to get things off their chest to see a loved one for a last time or reconcile something about themselves and I just find them so lovely. I've read two books in this series and both of them have just been great and if you are a big fan of this series like me there is a special edition with sprayed edges and also they have amazing end papers and it's in hardback so if you want this special edition in particular, ooh, almost dropped it there, I'll have the ISBN in the description box down below. So I treated myself to some editions of copies that I already own. So I already own Beloved by Toni Morrison and Sula by Toni Morrison and I don't particularly love the covers that I have. They were sent to me for review so I'm very grateful for them but I think I'm going to unhaul those copies and just keep these these editions. I have seen multiple editions of Toni Morrison going around as she deserves. She's a fantastic writer. She deserves all of the different editions and I really just love her writing and the way that she delves in deep to certain topics. I think it's literary fiction at its finest. It's just brilliant brilliant writing from a brilliant brilliant mind. I have not read Sula. I hope to get to that in the future but I have read Beloved and it's a five star read for me. It's black gothic at its finest but it's also just so harrowing and emotional. It's a mind bender in the way that it transfuses and slips between time as well but it's just absolutely fantastic and one of the best books I have ever read of all time and so I just wanted to have an edition on my shelves that reflected how much I loved it and suited the story so I'm very happy to have these on my shelves now and I'm also equally very happy to have these black editions of the Knife of Never Letting Go trilogy by Patrick Ness. So it's actually the Chaos Walking trilogy I should say. And this consists of three books, The Knife of Never Letting Go, The Ask and the Answer and Monsters of Men. I've already read all three of these, I've given them all five stars. This is one of my favourite young adult 
sci-fi dystopian series of all time. I think it's absolute genius, fantastic, and in the year of 2023 I reread The Knife of Never Letting Go and it held up. It was five stars again for me and just absolute brilliance. I definitely want to reread the rest of the series at some point. But these books, when I got them, I got them in a discount sale at TK Maxx for a very cheap price for all three books and they were the white editions which looks pretty much the same as these but in white and I love black. I love black and I just think it's one of my favourite colours to see books in so I've wanted the black editions for a very long time but I haven't been able to justify buying brand new more expensive copies of the books but when I went off to drop off some books from my unhaul and donate some books to my local Oxfam they had all three of these for one pound and yes the spines are a bit cracked but I don't care I got these each book one pound three pounds for the whole series I was over the moon and I'm just so happy to have them in black now and just to have these on my shelves because I adore them I adore this series I'm so happy and honored that the publisher sent me 10 things that never happened by Alexis Hall as you all know how I feel about Alexis Hall's books on this channel I love his writing I love his romance books and this is another one of his queer romances it's set in the same world or like character universe as the books boyfriend material so if you enjoy those this is kind of linked through the characters and in this one we're following Sam Becker and Jonathan Forrest so Sam Becker works for Jonathan Forrest and he's not really great at his job and he gets summoned by Jonathan and he truly believes that Jonathan is going to fire him so while he is on their way there he decides to trip fall and bash his head and then fake amnesia and pretend he cannot remember anything and in the process of that Jonathan feels very responsible and kind of takes care of Sam and starts then maybe some like romantic feelings start to blossom but of course now he's faked the amnesia Sam's like what do I do do I fess up it, it, it's a bit of an awkward situation to be in and of course Jonathan just feels so much guilt for what has happened to Sam and the fact that he's lost his memory it just sounds like it's going to be a mess a messy situation I've read fake dating before but I've not read fake amnesia and it seems like such a fun trope to just introduce and inject there. I haven't seen it before and I like that it's something creative and something different but I believe Alexis Hall is also going to make it funny and entertaining and very sweet and cute at the same time. In Alexis Hall we trust. We have faith. I am super excited for A Tempest of Tea by Hafsha Faisal. I've never read anything by this author before but she is very well known for We Hunt the Flame series and this one just sounds like it ticks all of my boxes. It is an intoxicating brew of secrets, vampires and romance and from what I understand there is this tea house which is actually a front for an illegal blood house for vampires. Doesn't that just sound fascinating? <laughs> I love tea, I love vampires, it just sounded like it was going to be the perfect like young adult book for me and if it's got vampires in it I will read it. I go to Oxfam quite often to donate books okay because I'm always unhauling books and when I went there they had two classics that I decided to get the first one is The Great Gatsby and this edition look at this edition look at that look at that this is an edition that doesn't have an ISBN that is how rare it is and it looks like the traditional Penguin classics but this is almost new the quality is so good it's from The Times like a Penguin Times collaboration, I have no idea what, but I saw this and I had to have it and I really had to hold myself back from buying the Frankenstein one as well, but I already have multiple editions of that book and that one was a bit more damaged, whereas this is almost spanking new, so I just got it for one pound. I hate the story of The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, which is what this book is. I can't stand it. I don't like this book for multiple reasons. I don't like the perspective that it's chosen to be told from. I don't like the representation of women and how they are treated in this classic. I don't like the storyline. I didn't like any of the characters. I didn't like anything about this book. So Olivia Savannah, why did you spend a pound and buy it? because of the edition. Let's just be honest, I got it because of the edition, but the truth of the matter is, as much as I don't like this classic, I really, really like the film that they did with Leonardo DiCaprio, and I think it's a very, very good film, simply because it took a storyline and characters and a plot that I really, really don't like, and it made it into a film that I liked. <laughs> 
<laughs> that takes skill. I laughed throughout that. I shipped the two characters who are absolutely not together but I read innuendo into all of their interactions and it was a flamboyant production and it pulled it off. And so I'm keeping this book on my shelves more so as a like, it even says like a film classic on the side. I'm keeping it as a memorabilia stand-in for how much I enjoy the film. And also, it's a beautiful addition for my classic shells. And then while I was there, I also got The Outsider by Albert Camus. I don't own a copy of this, even though I read this in school. And when I read this in school, I felt okay about it. It's about a man who's put on trial. His mother died yesterday, and he is kind of... He's very unemotional and emotionally detached in the way that he speaks, and it's about that trial that he goes on. I read this in school, and I felt okay about it. But we analysed the beginning of this book in class to the death of it. We picked it apart, we tore it to shreds, and as much as I felt okay about the book, I will always remember those opening pages and I will always remember the first line because this taught me a very important story in terms of my creative writing journey and what you want in a first line of a book. I think this first line of the book, which is, I think, Mother Died Yesterday, if I'm remembering correctly, is the perfect start to a book. Yeah, Mother Died Today or maybe yesterday. Fantastic. And so I kind of want to reread this one because it's taught me a lot about writing and it's one that I think about often and it's stayed with me in my mind for years and that takes skill. So that's the reason why I got these two books. The Days at the Morizaki Bookshop by Satoshi Yakisawa. This is a translated book. It's about a character who goes to this bookshop and they say that their lives began when they went to the bookshop. That's all I know about it. I've just seen this book pop up so much on booktube and people enjoy it. It's short. I have been enjoying East Asian translated literature quite a lot so I thought I would just give this one a go. It was something I got from Shannon, Treat Your Shelves, Unhaul and I thought why not snag it. Charlotte from Chatty the Book Chatterer was unhauling some books and she sent me the most amazing package of these two books that she was unhauling, a book for my friend which she is really grateful for and has already received and loved and enjoyed and also an amazing Raven Cycle pin that I will cherish forever. Thank you so much Charlotte. But in that package one of the books she unhauled was Mr Loverman by Bernadine Everisto. I don't know too much about this book other than people say that this is a book that is better than Girl, Woman, Other and I felt quite mediocre about Girl, Woman, Other but I've been meaning to give Everisto's writing another chance. I'm all for giving authors a second chance and I believe this one follows an unlikable main character who's Jamaican British and is a bit of a loverman from the way that he kind of wanders around but reviewers have said you can't help but feel sympathy for him and I'm curious as to how and why that happens and hopefully I'll just be able to click with the writing in this one a lot more than Girl, Woman, Other. I was sent a review copy of Alien Clay by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I've just been collecting his books and I need to get started on reading them all but every single one of his sci-fi books just sounds so fascinating. This one is set in a prison that's on this alien planet and the prison compound goes quiet and so they send people in to kind of discover what happened, where did all these prisoners go, where did all the inmates go and it's from the perspective of one of the prisoners. It sounds fascinating, it sounds like it's alien and it described it as like the world building is masterful and his world building does sound masterful and I love masterful world building so I just want in, I just want in on the fun and I'm looking forward to reading it. Thank you very much to the publishers also for sending The Catch by Amy Leah. This is the third and final book in the romance series that's by Amy Lea. It starts with Set On You, the second book is X's and O's, and then there's this last one. I haven't actually read the synopsis of this last one because I still need to read the second one and I don't want to give myself spoilers for who the couple is going to be. I should probably be able to, to guess, but I just don't want to know. So I haven't read the synopsis, but I've read Set On You and I'll leave a link to the wrap up where I review that particular book in the description box down below. I loved Set On You. I thought it was very, very good. I think about it often and the more I think about it the more I appreciate what that book did in terms of having such great character development, showing the stages of a relationship very very realistically and also talking about workout culture and social media and fitness 
influences all in a very realistic and healthy way. I really appreciated it, especially as I am on that world. Most of my social media is all about booktube and book talk, but other than that, it's all fitness stuff because that's my other hobby I really like. So I am looking forward to completing this series. Right, so another book that I snagged from Shannon's Unhaul was Dominicana by Angie Cruz. This was shortlisted for the Women's Prize in the year that it was on the list for it and it's been one of the oldest books on my TBR wish list for a very very long time as in one of the oldest 10 books that I've heard about and been meaning to read. It's a Latin book about this girl from the Dominican Republic who never ever dreamed about going to America but when someone proposes to her who is twice her age and whisks her way to America she says yes because of wanting a better life for herself and it just sounds like it talks about all of that and unpacks it, unpacks what it means to be Dominican while in the US, be so young, married to someone who's almost twice her age. It just sounds like it's going to touch on a lot of really interesting themes that I would personally find insightful to read about. We have a very exciting proof and that is for Infinity Alchemist by Case and Calendar. It's following a character called Ashwoods who is not supposed to be practicing alchemy because it's forbidden but when he's caught by Ramsay instead of Ramsay handing him in, Ramsay blackmails him into helping him find this very sacred book, the Book of Source. And as they go on their journey and their quest to kind of discover the book of source maybe they start to get close to each other and maybe they start having feelings for each other I don't read that much young adult fantasy anymore but I do have faith in Case and Calendar's writing I've enjoyed every single book that I've read by Case and Calendar so far and I'm interested to see what they manage to do with a fantasy book because I've not read any of their fantasy before I am also very excited to read The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland so this is again a young adult book with magic elements. This is me saying I don't read young adult fantasy and that I'm very excited to read quite a few of them. So in this one it's set in a world where only women have magic and the few men that know that women have magic are trying to eradicate them but there is a killer on the loose and the killer le leaves behind no DNA and no fingerprints. There are three women who team up to try and find the killer while evading the men who are trying to kill them because five women have been killed by this killer and no one seems interested in doing anything. It sounds like it's going to be dark and mysterious and also kind of have some of that magic element to it but also just be a bit of a murder mystery and I have been enjoying young adult murder mysteries quite a lot, I've been enjoying magic -y stories so the fusion of both of them is something Something that I definitely want to try. Super excited, thank you so much Bloomsbury for sending me Sleep Like Death by Callan Bayron. So this is a Snow White retelling. I am so excited for it because I loved You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight by this author and I just want to read more and more of their works. This proof actually glows in the dark, this apple glows in the dark. I've tried and tested it and it's absolutely so cool and fantastic but let me tell you about this book in particular. In this one there's this evil person called Knight and he transforms wishes into curses and has been making deals with people so that they all become cursed. Eve knows this because her mother is one of the people who was cursed and Eve has this uncanny ability to communicate with the animals around her so she's been training all her life to fight this knight who is terrible but when the queen, Queen Regina, starts going a bit out of her head and cursing and lashing out at everyone around her, Eve starts to question if all of her training is enough to save the people that she truly cares about. Yes, give me a Snow White retelling. The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. This is a romanticy book. It's a vampire romanticy book. And that's all I really needed to know to pick it up. And I think that's all you need to know at this point. <laughs> You're either going to want to read a vampire romanticy book or not. But it sounds like the characters just are really well done and that the romance is very steamy and also very well done. I was sent these two books unsolicited so I don't actually know that much about them. The first one is Trial of the Sun Queen by Nisha J. J. Tooley and then the second one, I believe this is book two in the series, is called Rule of the Aurora King and I believe there is a third one out there somewhere in the world and these are romanticy books I want to say and it's about ten women, a deadly contest and only one can win the Sun King's heart. Okay I'll try it. I'm super excited to read That Self Same Metal by Brittany N. Williams. This is a debut young adult fantasy book. It's a Shakespearean kind of 
retelling. So this one is described in four ways. So it's a sweeping fantasy, hashtag black girl magic, it's got queer representation and it's set in Shakespearean London. Those are the four things that you needed to tell me to make me want to read this book. On the front it says all the world's a stage and a new star is about to make her grand entrance. It's got a black woman doing magic on the cover. What more do you need to know? It just sounds like a brilliant book and I'm interested in giving it a go. I have book club on Tuesday for Edge of Here by Kalechi Okafor. This is a short story collection by a black author and it's a collection of weird and wonderful and wacky short stories. I've only read a few of them so far and they all seem quite distinct and different from each other which is absolutely fascinating to me and I think this one is best going to be discussed in a review because they're so strange and different that I want to be able to speak to the short story collection as a whole before I talk on it. We have a, a proof of Fragile Enchantment by Alison Saft. This was from a goodie bag for an event that I went to. On the front it says, a cursed seamstress, a smouldering prince, a royal scandal woven between them. So this one is about a renowned dressmaker who uses the magic in her blood to weave memories into the fabric and she is brought to the palace to create a wardrobe for the prince and then a scandal kind of erupts around them and it's up to her to choose if she's going to I think it has something to do with choosing romance or choosing her job so that sounds that sounds fun it sounds fun I haven't read too many of these like young adult fantasy Bridgerton style books that have been coming out but I'm interested to give them a try. Surprisingly I have been enjoying books with serial killers in them. I did not... this is a surprising turn of events to me as well. When I heard about Butter by Asako Yuzuki I wanted to try it. It is a chunky book, it is a translated book and it sounds fascinating. So in this one you've got a gourmet chef and a serial murderer who has a taste for life's luxuries. So the serial killer in this one is a chef who, is been, who has been known for murdering lonely businessmen and seducing them with her cooking. And she is in jail and refuses to talk to any of the journalists. But then you've got a journalist with an appetite for a good story. And when she writes to the serial killer saying, I just want the recipe for your beef stew, the serial killer can't help writing back. And that is how they start to form their relationship. And as the serial killer cooks, for her, she's trying to thread together her journalist story. But as she does that, maybe she discovers, maybe they both discover they have more in common than they first thought. It just sounds fascinating to me and I have no idea where the story is going to go from that premise and I want to find out. In the Shallows by Tanya Byan. Tanya Byan writes sapphic young adult stories and this one is a captivating sapphic mystery about lost love and second chances. It's about these two girls who meet and have a whirlwind romance but then one of them goes missing and on New Year's Day a girl is taken out of the sea and it's about who that person is who's been taken out of the sea and about finding each other again and second chances. That's what I can glean from the synopsis. It just sounds a bit whimsical and lovely and I love the way the author describes this book as in it's not one that is going to be going down in history, it's not one that people are going to sing about from the top of their lungs but it is just a sapphic love story that can take you away to a magical place and sometimes you need those kind of stories. Jamie, we have Jamie by L.D. Lipinski and it's about, it's a middle grade book about this middle grade person who's preparing to go to the secondary school and they are non-binary and they realise that there are secondary schools for girls and secondary schools for boys and they don't know where they fit into this picture and it's not only about having to make those decisions and growing up and all of that but also trying to carve a space for you in a world where there is no space that is automatically made or preordained for you and who you are. People say that this is a fantastic queer middle grade book and I'm here for all of the queer non-binary middle grade books possible. Emmett by L.C. Rosen. This is a queer rom-com retelling of Jane Austen's Emma and that was all I needed to hear about it before I was like I will absolutely read this Book. It's also by the author of Camp and like Jack and other spare parts and I've just heard amazing things about this author's writing. I've been meaning to pick up one of those books so I jumped at the chance to read this one. It just sounds like it's going to be really really fun. Oh we're back to Charlotte's Unhaul books. So one of the books that Charlotte was also unhauling was August Town by Kai Miller. So I read Things I Have Withheld by Kai Miller in January of 2023. It's a non-fiction essay collection and I absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars and it was a new favourite 
so when I heard about the fact that Kaimilla has also written fiction I wanted to try it. Kaimilla is a Jamaican British author and so I think this one is set in Jamaica yes it's set in Jamaica and that's all I really needed to know it's like set in Jamaica it's got those characters like I'm trying to read more Jamaican literature as well I just add it to my shelves and my collection as someone who has Jamaican heritage so yeah that's why I picked this one up we have here Mary or the birth of Frankenstein by Anne Eichhout. This is translated from Dutch and it's essentially the story about the night that Mary Shelley wrote the story of Frankenstein. So it's not a retelling of Frankenstein itself but it's a retelling of Lord Byron and all of the other authors who came around that campfire and decided to make up spooky stories and how they got there and why Mary constructed this story. It's a fictional book so don't go into it expecting non-fiction and it's dark and gothicy. I have started reading this. I've been looking at reviews and I find it quite interesting that people who have read the edition or the copy or the, the text in English, it's originally written in Dutch and translated, find it more enjoyable than people who are reading it in the original language. That's absolutely fascinating to me as someone who could potentially read it in both languages and I will share my thoughts once I'm done and see if I agree. I Promise It Won't Always Hurt Like This by Claire McIntosh. Now you might know Claire McIntosh for her thrillers and crime books that she writes so this non-fiction book might be very out of the left field to hear about but Claire McIntosh has been dealing with grief and has written this collection of 18 assurances on grief that could be comforting or welcomed or something that is kind of nice to hear when you're going through the grieving process. If you've been on my channel for a while you know that I am very interested in the topic of grief and how it manifests in fiction but also in non-fiction and in our real lives and how it is a mental state that we have to get past and all of the emotions and taboo and the dredge of feelings we have through the different types of grief. It's a highly relatable human emotion and yet it's one that we still grapple with and struggle with and so I was very interested in reading this and I will let you know my thoughts once I have. The Burial Plot by Elizabeth McNeil. I was at an event where this author was talking about this book and it sounded so fascinating and that I really wanted to read it. In 1839 London where the cemeteries are full and bulging. There are far too many dead people and there's money to be made in death and it seems like these characters are trying their best to profit from the death when their luck runs out and they find a person bleeding at their feet. I'm very particular with my historical fiction I should say and it does sound like something I could enjoy. Spitting Gold by Carmen Mella Locus. This comes out in April 2024 and it's I think it's gonna make a big splash. It sounds really good. It's a queer fun book. It's got a good sister, a bad sister and one last con. So it's about these two sisters who go their separate ways and they don't get along with each other but they are brought together for one last con as they try to cheat this family out of money. And it just sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of trickery. Oh, and while they are doing the con, they might be haunted by a spirit who is trying to make everything go wrong at the same time. I've been writing the K-pop books high in young adult fiction and I'm just going to keep on doing it. And K-pop horror intrigued me. So this is Gorgeous Gruesome Faces by Linda Cheng. It's about this disgraced old previous K-pop star. She's young, she's like 18, but she's been disgraced and she spends all of her time wishing she was back in the K-pop limelight and stalking her ex groupie on social media when she enters a k-pop competition to try and recuperate and recover and get back into the industry and it ends up that she ends up teaming up with her ex groupie mates to do this but in the process of them working together again they both have to unpick a lot of their demons particularly what happened the night that their third member jumped to their death and whether that was intentional or if something more sinister is going on. So it sounds like it's got some of those horror elements but also like it's gonna have friendship at its core and manage to talk about the k-pop industry and all of the k-pop jazz. I'm curious to see how it handles it. It's not too long of a book but it sounds like it's gonna be a fun, fun, fun is that the right word or dark time. These two books are the first in a fantasy series. We've got The Lost War by Justin Lee Anderson and the second book in the series which is called The Bitter Crown. These are high fantasy books that people have said are a lot of fun. I've heard that it's got found family in it and that's all I really know. I think I knew the synopsis more at some point but to be honest with my fantasy books as long as they've got a found family at the core I'm very much inclined to like it and the humour just sounds 
like it's going to be there too, which is always enjoyable. We have Marta by Kaveh Akbar. And the reason why I'm interested in this one is because it just sounds like it's got a lot to do with death and grief and your emotions around it. So following this man who is really unsettled in his life, he's unhappy and he doesn't want to live anymore, but he doesn't want to waste his death. He's read about martyrs, he's studied martyrs, and it sounds like they've all made or died for a cause, and he's curious about what is worth dying for. And so he is going on this quest to research more about martyrdom, to meet other people who are in the process of dying, and what it's like and what to expect, and that fascination is what intrigues me. And last but not least, we have here Edenville by Sam Rebeline. It follows a couple, and one of them is offered a job at this town and Quinn who is his girlfriend is very skeptical about this job and skeptical about this town because a long time ago her best friend died there so she follows her partner to the small town and quickly discovers that there is something a bit strange going on one of the things that's very strange is that there's an entire secret society which is dedicated to solving some of the riddles that are left around this town but maybe that secret society is made up of people who are not actually people at all. I am curious about this one because I've heard that spiders are involved as you can see from the cover and I have severe arachnophobia. I am intensely afraid of spiders so I thought I should read it. As I said before reading about my most intense fear ever that should be fine right? And there you have it, so those are all of the books that have newly joined my shelves that I'm very very excited to get around to reading at some point and discussing with you all. Please let me know in the comment section down below what is the latest book you have bought, received, borrowed or acquired or leave a book stack emoji. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more and don't forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video and you know what they say, onwards and upwards. Excelsior!